I guess I just really wanted to write a hero story for a woman who is over 30, who has seen a lot of life because I'm growing up and I want to be able to have stories about being not just a, I don't just want to come of age as a teenager, I want to keep feeling what mm. that feels like. And mm. I wanted it to be a, a hero's story because I guess that's what most of our stories are. And I wanted it to explode and then become something else. Um, yeah. And I, can't relate at all to being a child actor and being in this role. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was a, my character is a child actress. She played a character called Flora the Fierce, yeah. right? Yeah. On her TV show, which yeah. I kind of loved. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved the character. I, when as soon as I read the script, I was, um, I just thought, what an extraordinary opportunity to get to spend time with someone like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I love that Alice had written a character who you're not really sure you want to spend any time with, but then you're kind of forced <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, it, it, uh, to me, it was, you know, she's pretty squirmy, but, um, but pretty interesting mm -hmm. and complicated. Uh, so I, I, I love doing it. I love thinking about her and, and working on it. Definitely, yeah. I love that idea. You're still becoming always all throughout life. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, doesn't stop when you turn 20 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I, it was a welcome relief to see you. You know, you broke my heart as August. Uh, still thinking about it, and it's like a welcome oh. departure too. From you know, yeah. you get to be big here, and you get to be weird and interesting, and talk yeah. about Elon. Oh, I loved playing Elon. I really am fascinated by these kinds of people, spiritual leaders, or, well, spiritual teachers, mm -hmm. is that right? Because he's not, he's mm -hmm. not a... He probably doesn't even like being He probably wouldn't even like that term, yeah. 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 He's an enlightened being. Yeah. He probably wouldn't like that either. He wouldn't. <laughs> well, no, he, yeah. he just, he, might do. he lets it out, he says it, true. why not? Yeah, yeah it's true. Might pass. He does say it, yeah. It was great to play it because, um, because of the sort of space that it allowed for comedy but also for I don't know like investigating really deep questions really and I love that the film is very deep and it does ask really mm. profound questions like about well, about like what we are and how we could transcend and what we would be transcending to and I don't know, I think it's... So I love that this story about this mother and a daughter has this sort of... It's within the context of this kind of philosophical, spiritual inquiry. Mm. I, I love that about the film, yeah. Profoundly silly. Profoundly <laughs> yeah. silly. <laughs> yeah. Sillily profound. Profound, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't like spend my entire. I mean, I grew up with lots of different things, but yeah, part of that, my my godmother was um, in an ashram for eleven years, and my mom went to retreats, and um, there were a lot of CDs that got played in the car that were my enemies because they were always on and always <laughs> sucking up the air I wanted to take as a teenager, um, and it was just like a really beautiful experience actually and, and it was just kind of like full of you know I mean imagine if you just got everyone that's in the party room now to try and be incredibly vulnerable earnest and sincere it's a very very interesting thing to be in a room with adults especially when I was a teenager mm. who are being very honest about what is going on in their lives and I don't I think it really made me because I knew that most of the time people are, are lying out of necessity mm -hmm. you know because it's not as though the world is a place that is truly safe for your vulnerability <laughs> like, or, or or that you know and, and like when Lucy you know truly shows herself when you show yourself and it's not easy um, it can some, be repellent to yeah it, that's a very painful and very you know 
it's not always easy to be sympathetic mm. and honest, you know? Mm. So um, true. Yeah, so I really wanted to show that in the film because I think it meant a lot to me and it, it it's really shaped my my world view in a way. And I kind of wanted to like to see if anyone else liked that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Going the easiest rate way possible. Yeah. <laughs> Fully feature film. And <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Um, what did you sort of like about the dynamics of the mother and daughter relationship? Because it's so it's dangerous mm. and like urgent and kind of complicated mm. in some ways. You put it uh, well. Just that. I like mm. that. Mm. Yeah. I. I. It's. I think that you know. What did I like about it? I. I I like that she's so, Lucy, well, I'll start from here. I, I think Lucy is so surprised and shocked and devastated when mm-hmm. Dylan, her daughter, says to her, um, when I, I ask, why do you act like I hate you? And she says, because you act like you hate me. Um, and... Um, I think she's so deeply shocked because I think that she so much of what she does in life is about trying to transcend her own suffering and escape her own past and her relationship with her mother and be a better person and be a really good person and be someone who gives love and I, I think that she assumes that it's beyond doubt that she loves her daughter and the fact that that fundamental fact is questioned by her daughter I think is like is like devastating for her and is sort of the beginning of a new chapter for her in her life I think she thought the beginning of the new chapter was sometime before um, but actually it wasn't Um, and I think what's interesting for me about it is I think that's quite moving, these people who, this woman who wants so much to be one thing and actually the way she behaves, who she feels she is isn't the way she comes across and it's because she, even though she feels a sensation of love, she doesn't know how to actively love because she sits in so much fear, you know, and she has to learn how to to, um, tackle that. She also kind of recreates these situations where, like, it really hit me editing and how, you know, Elon yelled. You know, there's this moment where people people yell at her a lot, <laughs> you know? And it's mm. like she's sort of, you know that she probably was, you know? That she probably was made to feel very, uh, like, she untrustworthy of herself or of love for herself. Yeah. And I feel like watching the edit, watching the way, you know, even see, seeing it, hearing it, like not just in the script, it was really intense to watch how um, everyone ends up <laughs> shouting at this oh, person, this is you very know? sad. Yeah, and and she's truly trying. Mm. And she's yet, trying, but she's get, <laughs> she gets things wrong all the she time. Gets you know? really like, I think she thinks she's being forthright when really yeah. she's being kind of a little cruel, <laughs> yeah. you know, and abrasive. Yeah. She can and be very cruel. She also. gets things wrong, and I think mm. it's because there's so, there's so much in the way, you know, and uh, like there are just too many ghosts in the room. You know? Sometimes as well, there's like there's something about needing to be in control and like needing to be cool, that is really uh, not compatible with love and growth and connection and intimacy. Like you have to be really embarrassed and vulnerable to be close to people because you're like most of the time you do really embarrassing stuff and like you do mess up. And mm. I think Lucy mm. wants to get to a place where she's good enough and perfect enough to connect with people and everything before that is you know and but you you never get that time you never reach that space you really and I love the way she kind of imparts this truth to Dylan and in some ways she's also always right about everything (laughs) it's true (laughs) like she always like even what happens to Dylan you know Mm. it's like really frustrating and I, lo- I love that hearing truth from an imperfect vessel, <laughs> you know, like, 
most extraordinary the moment when you say to her you're the most terrifyingly alive thing that could have come out of me <laughs> that, that line is so extraordinary and the way it's delivered the way is so you are, yeah. where it comes from as you say like because so much of the film we're quite conflicted about how we feel about her or mm. what she's doing <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. suddenly you, there's this 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 just this suddenly you you, you do feel sympathy tremendous sympathy mm -hmm. for for Lucy I, I found mm -hmm. yeah at, at many moments actually but that was one yeah when I was watching it yesterday that really leapt out also you know you're gonna have to find a way to forgive me and <laughs> forgive yourself for taking so long to forgive me is such a hard thing to hear and it's the truth you know mm -hmm. I don't know. Sorry, this oh guy. <laughs> I no, that was beautiful. I I am curious though. Like, mm. I, I don't think this is about your mother, but did it mm. feel dangerous to make a film about a mother-daughter relationship having a you know mother that we could know? Yeah, I did feel like um, more excited to tell a story that I was truly passionate about than I felt scared of people's interest in my personal life. Um, I guess because I'm just so interested in, I just love mothers and daughters and that's, I mean, a lot of the world is, are those people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is like, it was gonna happen at some point, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah, so. Yeah. And hopefully her being an artist makes her more empathetic to that. Because I know like some directors of non-artists are oh. like so terrified to ever say anything personal or you know, like tell a personal story in that way. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean it's not I, I know just because mothers and daughters of course like that's a a, a sort of spicy, you know, <laughs> like potential. But um yeah, I didn't really show her the script for a long time just because she's can be quite um Opinionated, <laughs> and, and, and I, I love her opinions, but I just wanted to wait, you know, until I had my own, had really had my own time, you know. So because I, I like feedback, I like hearing and going, oh yeah, I, I did fuck it up. Um, but um, no, I, mean, I, I, I was. It was actually such a beautiful gift that she, she really loves it. She really, she loves her <laughs> beyond loves her and. You know, it's so fun to like share the retreat world and all of that stuff, and you know, with her. Of course, she plays the doctor, the seminal role of, of the doctor <laughs> in the hospital. She told me we didn't get her good side, but we did shoot her from the front. So <laughs> <laughs> she looks that was beautiful. a very front on job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are both sides. It's like welcome to our world. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> so she's great. Um, yeah. And I won't keep you guys much longer, but I wondered if one of you could embarrass your director and just tell him what he likes. Like. Definitely. <laughs> they, I'm sure they could embarrass me easily. You want to start? Go first? Sure. Um, what she's like? I thought. I thought the. I'll start with the script because she wrote that, obviously, and um, I thought it was so bold and creative and original and funny and moving and, you know, I was really intrigued by it and it was, it surprised me and there were things in it that I'd never seen before and it was so much its own thing and it made me so curious about what kind of movie she would make. Um, and I don't know, I felt instantly, f I, I just felt so curious about her point of view. I thought she, she in the writing had such a unique voice and such, an, such a singular point of view that I, I hadn't spent time in before or spent time with before and I wanted to see where that would go and uh, and I felt on set also incredible amount of trust in her uh, incredible amount of respect for her um, I found her to be very open uh, and curious uh, but also very confident and very true to her own 
that own point of view. Um, I thought she was very supportive. I thought she was deeply kind, incredibly loving. Um, probably the opposite of Lucy in that way. Always, <laughs> always seemed to move from love. Um, I so do order like was, Lucy though. <laughs> that it's that terrible. Was, that was my experience, and I'll, I'd like to embarrass Ben too and say, yeah. I also felt, I, I also felt um, it's such a remarkable time working with Ben. I think he's a phenomenal, extraordinary actor. So talented. Such an amazing job in this film, um, and it was such a total joy working with him. I also found him to be incredibly available and present and generous as an actor and it was so much fun doing oh, scenes together because so I, I even from the be beginning of a take I'd be like I'm not entirely sure where it's gonna go and mm. uh, but I trust that we're gonna go somewhere and it'll be different and it'll be I don't know we'll see what it'll be but um, it was it was really a joy to do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel this way. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> but uh, yeah. about you yeah. with all of this as well. Maybe but it's time to embarrass Alice more. So it's going to be embarrassing for yeah, Alice. Yeah, Alice. <laughs> Alice is like the most amazing mixture of really, really incredible intelligence and some great sort of depth and incredible ability <laughs> to observe the world with love but also incredible silliness and absurdity and daftness yeah. <laughs> and it's a really unusual thing because because that brings out one's own daftness and that doesn't often get an outing in the world because yeah. you're not really allowed but me and Ali, I just feel like I can be oh. so my stupid no, <laughs> so. and also that was really a big part of why it was joyful to do the scenes because because I really I felt so relaxed yeah and I very I mean I try to be relaxed on every job yeah but sometimes it doesn't really allow for that the, the situation of mm. filming doesn't allow for relaxation and you can actually feel incredibly tense <laughs> incredibly and, incredibly and tense. like there's something to get right which I think yeah. is the but yeah. we didn't feel that. I felt like we couldn't. We couldn't fail. Is what I yeah. felt like. It mm. would. So that was incredibly. And I don't know how you did that because I don't know how you created that kind of environment because um, it was your first film. And I don't think if I was directing my first film that I would have been able to create those conditions so mm. effortlessly. But you did. But That's an amazing. You thing. know what though? I would like to say like Desiree Armstrong and Molly Hallam, like our producers. They great producers. Great. Yeah. So great. Amazing. And really, really also set the tone as well like they made um feeling like you could be you know you guys are so so good so extraordinarily electric in it and you didn't i, I didn't want to have to punish you to get that because i just was like i don't think it's necessary like they're so smart and lovely and generous like no, no need to. I, I don't know. Also, making a film about stuff like this, like, wouldn't it be so stupid if I was a big dickhead? You know, like. And now you have catharsis with your daughter. You know, like it's just not the it's not the time or the place, as they say on Housewives. Um, yeah.